coming up on this episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy. Vitamin D is important for the synthesis of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter involved in mood. Um, a lot it's of a people- happy chemical. Vitamin D plays a crucial role in our health. It supports our bones and our cardiovascular and immune systems. It affects our cell metabolism. It regulates and controls our genes and much, much more. Your body makes vitamin D when it's exposed to sunlight. But the problem is that most of us aren't exposed to enough sunlight to produce adequate levels of vitamin D. And most of us are not eating enough of the few natural dietary sources of vitamin D, like fatty wild fish, like mackerel, herring, and cod liver oil. Earlier this year, Dr. Hyman spoke to health and science author Max Lugavere about the importance of having optimal vitamin D levels. Vitamin D uh, deficiency is thought to be a risk factor for developing um, Alzheimer's disease. There's a, a review of environmental risk factors that I talk about in the <clears throat> book, and vitamin D was one of the top. Yeah, probably 80% of us are deficient or insufficient, and that leads to depression. It leads to increased for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, cancer, so many different things. And I think, you know, there's been mixed data about we're placing it, fixing it or not. And I think it's complicated because when you're like, you know, people are eating, you know, garbage and they throw a vitamin D in there, it's not going to help. Them. Yes, correct. <laughs> you know, if they're not exercising, they're smoking, they're drinking a lot they're not ex- they're, they're eating crap you take a vitamin d it's not going to do anything but if in in all things being equal people who are low in vitamin d have higher risk of this and if you clean up your lifestyle and you're still low in vitamin d it'll make a big difference yeah i'm glad i'm glad you brought up context because one thing that that f- very few people know you could be spending as much time in the sun as you want frolicking all day you know in the in the in the beautiful warming rays of the sun or even supplementing with vitamin d but if you're not getting adequate magnesium in your diet which 50% of the population does not get no, adequate true. magnesium. The enzymes that convert the vitamin D that your skin creates into its act, active hormone form in the body, all are magnesium dependent. Yeah. And magnesium, half of us don't consume adequate magnesium. It's found in dark leafy greens, pumpkin seeds, dark chocolate, almonds. Yeah. And, it's and, cr- and a lot of things cause us to lose magnesium. Stress, coffee, alcohol, yeah. sugar, caf- you know, all, all those things we love. Exactly. You know, mental health is such a big crisis in this country. Um, you know, one in four people experience major depression in their life. Uh, it's the biggest cause of the economic burden of chronic disease, not from direct health care costs, but things like disability, loss of quality of life, not being able to function very well in your life. And, um, and you know, vitamin D is one of those things that seems to really impact depression. Uh, so you, you talk about a study in the book It has to do with vitamin D and depression. Can you talk more about that? Well, vitamin D is important for the synthesis of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter involved in mood. Um, A lot of a happy chemical. It's a happy chemical. That's what what Prozac does. It increases serotonin, right? Increases serotonin. um, You know, SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, uh, can boost serotonin at the synapse, which is. But serotonin is also involved in focus and attention and executive function. but yeah, so vitamin D is important in the in the synthesis of serotonin from its raw material, raw, raw materials, um, one of which is tryptophan, an amino acid. So making sure that your vitamin D levels are in a normal, healthy range, uh, important. And you can easily get your vitamin D levels tested from a doctor. It's a very cheap test. Uh, the recommendations that I make in the book are to make sure that your levels are somewhere between 40 and 60 nanograms per milliliter, yeah. which seems to be a range where... We see the lowest risk of all-cause mortality. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember reading a study. It was incredible that women who had vitamin D levels less than 45 um, had a 60% higher chance of having preterm labor. Hmm. And when you think of the cost of you know neonatal intensive care and taking care of preterm babies, it's staggering. And you're talking about pennies for a vitamin, you yeah. can liter- <laughs> literally prevent preterm labor. So it's really connected to almost everything. And the the differences with vitamin D is that not everybody needs the same amount, right? So what should we be taking? Correct. Uh, not everybody needs the same amount. You really, before you start taking vitamin D as a supplement, uh, you ought to get your levels tested. Um, you know, when we make, when we synthesize it from the sun, our skin basically makes what we need and it breaks down the rest. It's really, it's, it's almost impossible to get too much vitamin D from the sun. Although lifeguards can have levels of 150. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. So, so, and that's not toxic. Right. I mean, it could increase, cal- it increases calcium absorption. 
Um, so you, I always like to recommend vitamin K2 for people yeah. that are in, I mean, especially at those levels. Um, but with a vitamin D supplement, I think generally uh, there was a, a, a research calculation that suggested that for the general population, 2,000 international units a day mm-hmm. uh, would be would be ideal to get the average, you know, the average person to an optimal level. Um, but people, again, have different, uh, you know, they're, people who are older might need to supplement more. Yeah. People who are overweight might need mm. to supplement more to get the same uh, improvement. Mm. And also, you, you again... Yeah, people who are overweight tend to be low in vitamin D because it's a fat-soluble vitamin, so it all gets right. sucked into the fat and it doesn't get in their system that we need. Yeah, it gets sequestered by fat tissue. The same also can occur with other fat-soluble vitamins like A, uh, E, K... Yeah, I don't know if you read this morning. This morning, probably not, because you probably don't read the JAMA Pediatrics Journal every day. But <laughs> not pediatrics, no. <laughs> but I do, and I I read this paper this morning that showed that if women, when they were pregnant, took twenty eight hundred units of vitamin D compared to four hundred, which is in the typical prenatal vitamin, that there was a dramatic reduction in um, the effects on uh, bad effects on bone when their kids were born. In other words, their their kids their babies had much higher bone density and then their risk later in life of osteoporosis was dramatically reduced. Hmm. So, and that, you know, that's almost 3000 units, which most doctors don't even think about recommending. And, and some people, you know, may need up to five or 10,000 if they're not good absorbers and there's genes that affect that. So people might need only a thousand, but I, I think a thousand is minimum for most people. And, and it takes about a thousand units to raise your blood level, 10 nanograms per deciliter. So if you're 20, you need at least 3,000 to get up to 50, right? And, and, and then you can see how you do. But I think people need to measure it. They need to check it. And they need to make sure they're okay. And if not, take the right supplement. And not the the kind that you often get from your doctor, I hate to say, which is vitamin D2, which is not an active form of the vitamin, but vitamin D3. And you can get that over the counter now. And you can get 1,000 units and others. But you want to make sure you measure it, right? Yeah. I mean, vitamin D2 is the plant-based form of vitamin D mm-hmm. and vitamin D3 is the animal based form. It's mm-hmm. bioidentical to what we create in mm-hmm. our own skin. So you always want to make sure that you're taking vitamin D2. I mean, sorry, D3. Okay, so there, yeah. that brings up a sticky question. So it's, it's usually made from lanolin and other things that you can get it from sheep and stuff. And they're fat. Um, so what if you're vegan? What do you do? <laughs> is it? That's a good question. Uh, I've vegan sources of vitamin D3. Um, it, that's hard to get. Yeah, I, it, right. It's yeah, it's get. just one more of those nutrients so, that you're just not really optimizing. Yeah, and, then, and not often people don't convert vitamin D2 to D3. And if you're a vegan, you want to make sure you're you're checking vitamin D3. And you can also check D2. So you can see you might have a really high D2, but a very low D3. There are so many supplements on the market. And it can be really confusing to know if you're getting the right type or taking the right amount of vitamins and minerals. Dr. Hyman recently spoke to Dr. Elizabeth Boham, his colleague at the Ultra Wellness Center, about the importance of determining your individual needs when it comes to taking supplements. They also discussed why we are seeing such high levels of nutrient deficiencies in our population. I think, you know, we're we're taught that we should really get everything from food, but there's been a lot of problems with our food supply. That's um, true. You know, we, aside from us eating mountains of processed food, which has got no nutrients except things that yep. are fortified, right? Yes. Enriched. Why do they enrich it? Because it's impoverished to start with, <laughs> right? And on top of that, uh, the way we grow our food in soil that's depleted because of industrial farming techniques because of the fertilizers and chemicals that literally destroy the microbiome of the soil, which is needed to extract nutrients from the dirt, from the soil that the plants can use, which then we eat. We've seen 50% reduction in nutrient levels like magnesium and other minerals in our vegetables over the last 50 years. So if you're eating broccoli today and you ate it 50 years ago, it's a different food. It's a different broccoli. And then you're shipping them over long distances. The average apple you eat has been in a storage house for a year, (laughs) right? And they're... They're refrigerated, kept in storage, they're transported, so they lose nutrition. And we're also living a lifestyle that depletes our nutrients. Yep. We're drinking too much alcohol, smoking, eating processed food, which, by the way, in order to, we'll talk about this, in order to actually metabolize your food, the way your food is metabolized is requiring vitamins and minerals to run that as cofactors food. for all yeah. those enzymes, right. right? To run the food through your metabolic factory, yeah. you can't. It's like the assembly line. If you don't have the nutrients, you can't run the food through. Right. And so you get 
more depleted. And then we have all these drugs we take that deplete our nutrients. Yes. Medications. Uh, and then yes. so we have all these reasons why we're nutritionally deficient. So let's talk about how we learn in our practice, the Ultra Wellness Center, about what people's nutritional status is. How do we, how do yeah. we figure that out? Well, so we, do, we, we look at it from multiple different angles, right? First, it starts with a physical exam. You know, what is their uh, waist to hip ratio? How are they holding on to weight in their body? Then we, we look to look for signs of nutritional deficiencies. Maybe their hair is dry or their skin is dry or they have different, um, they have spots on their nails, which could indicate zinc deficiency. Yeah. You know, we look at their diet intake. Wait, 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 wait they... the nutritional physical exam, I just mm -hmm. want to pause because you teach that course mm -hmm. as at the Institute for Functional Medicine. And it's, it's fascinating when you learn as a doctor what the clinical signs are of vitamin deficiencies, right? So we know the obvious ones that, for example, if you have scurvy, you get no gum issues, right? Yep. If you have B vitamin deficiencies, you get little cracks in your mouth called chelosis. Yep. If you have white spots in your nose, it might be zinc deficiency. If it's... Yep. For example, Bumps on the back of your arms, arms you know, or dry a, skin. We think about vitamin A mm -hmm. a lot. We think about zinc. Yeah. Um, and, and my favorite test is a vitamin D test. You know mm -hmm. what that one is? Yes. Tell us about so that. So when you're, if you if you bang on somebody's leg and they have pain, then that could be a sign that they're low in vitamin D. Yeah. So, so if you so, take your thumb and you press right now, ready to go press right now on their shin bone, yeah. and if it's tender, then it means you're probably vitamin D deficient because it makes your yeah. bone soft. Now, and I sore. take vitamin D, yeah. so my bone doesn't hurt at all when I press on it. You're pressing right now. Oh, yeah. yeah, mine doesn't hurt either. Yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my vitamin <laughs> I'm D. I'm taking my vitamin D. <laughs> and I think what, what is really important to pay attention to with supplements is that when we use them in a personalized approach, mm -hmm. when we're testing, when we're, we're using them based on what that individual person needs, not just saying, okay, everybody take this, which sometimes that's helpful too, but, but really figuring out for that individual person, what are they deficient in? Where do they need to focus? That can make a huge, huge difference yeah, for how they true. feel. It's so true. And it's different for each person, like you're saying, based on our genetic makeup, right? right. And, and everything else going on in our body, not just our genetics, but what mm. other diseases we're dealing with, what other, how we digest and absorb our nutrients. Yeah. I mean, so many things impact our nutritional needs. Yes. Yeah, so, so someone, for example, had like a vitamin D receptor gene that mm -hmm. made them require a high dose of vitamin D. And you took 100,000 people and you saw them taking vitamin D. Well, you think they're taking enough, but it might not be enough for that person. And if you exactly. actually took that subset and you studied them and you gave them the right amount to get their blood levels optimally, it might be different. It will absolutely be different. You can get your vitamin D levels tested through a simple blood test. Supplementing with vitamin D3 can be an effective way to reverse a vitamin D deficiency, but it can take between six and 10 months for levels to optimize. Dr. Hyman recommends working with a trusted healthcare practitioner to monitor your levels over time and ensure you are getting the right amounts for your particular needs. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Doctor's Pharmacy. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with a friend and leaving us a comment below. Until next time.